Hey everybody, Mike here. My goal for this video is to conclude our tutorial about how to streamline workflows using ArcGIS Pro Model Builder. So we're going to do a couple things to button up the model and make it user-friendly. Um, I'm going to make it user-friendly for a non-technical user such that they can enter in their two parameters and run the model and get the result. Um, but it'll be up to you to make the model um, for whoever your end user uh, is going to be. So if it needs to be more technical, uh, that'll be uh, up to you to provide those parameters for your end, end user. So we're going to go over how to close and open the model, how to change the name of our model, um, how to use the auto layout function, how to assign parameters, and then how to run the model from catalog. So um, I have the model that we were working with in the previous two videos. And um, first thing I'm going to do is close it. And there's a couple of different ways that you can change the name of the model. Um, the way I'm going to change the name is right click the model in catalog and open up the properties. And we'll be changing the label. So I'll change this label to be iterate clip tutorial. And then I'll hit OK. And you'll see that the name of our model has uh, changed. And so to open that, if I were to just double click it right now, it's going to open up uh, the, the window for geoprocessing. And we don't have any parameters here. Uh, so we need to go back into the model and assign those parameters. So I'll go back to catalog. I'll right click our model and open edit. So we'll be back to where we can edit the model. And we're going to assign our parameters. But before we do that, we want to use the auto layout tool to show the logical workflow that we have going on here. And you can find that up in the model builder menu in the view tab. Just left click auto layout. And it will intuitively organize the model. Um, based on how you have it set up and you can customize this if you want. It's just a quick tool um, But as we've seen in the previous two videos uh, We're going to start with an input polygons here, and then we're going to get a field value and all the way over here in between the name English new and clip we've got a precondition so the auto layout has organized this such that the precondition happens before the clip tool happens. Um, you can save that to keep it that way. And uh, I want to have our end user be able to select the polygons and the line features. So what I'll do is I'll find my two inputs, the Greek prefecture boundaries and the Greek roads. I'll right click and choose this parameter option. And you'll see a little P appears. And I'll do the same thing on the Greek roads. Now, and then I'll save it. And then now if I go back to catalog and I double click our model, you'll see that there are two um, input parameters here for the user to input. And they can choose the drop down menus. And um, once they're happy with the input parameters, they can click Run, which is uh, right here on the bottom right, covered by my face at the moment, um, to run the model, just like any standard geoprocessing tool. Um, but one thing I'd also like to change is, is these titles to make it look more like uh, your standard Esri geoprocessing tool. So to do that, I'll go back to our model, and I'll right-click our bubble and rename it. And I'll rename this 
input features or data sets. And I'll do the same thing over on the Greek roads, but I'll rename this one clip features. Um, if you were to open up the clip geoprocessing tool, it's going to look very similar. I have these two menu items. And so we're just going to design the tool to reflect that um, so that it's easier for our non-technical end user. Um, and then right now it hasn't, those changes aren't reflected, but once I save and um, go back and reopen this, you'll see that those, uh, that's changed to, to show our, our changes there. So that's how you make those changes. And then um, a couple of other things that you can do if you want to add more um, input features. Let's say that you, you want the user to be able to pick a new file location. You can, you can assign that as a parameter. Um, and you could also rename it to um, be output features or data set. And save that. We'll go back and open it back up and you'll see that. And any of the items that we have in currently included in the model will, will automatically default um, to, to be filled in the model here. And then let's say that your the assumption that we're currently using is that uh, we're going to be using the same two data sets with the, the same column structure, but, but let's say that you're going to be changing data sets and maybe you have a GIS analyst who's familiar with data sets and you feel confident changing some of the variables in this model. Um, we can add a parameter to our expression and code block that's creating this um, inline variable substitution here. And if I wanted to do that, I'll find our calculate value tool and I'll right click, find create variable from parameter expression. And then I'll do that same workflow for making the code block. Let me save that. And if I open this calculate value, you see we got these two expressions and code blocks entered in. And if I open up our expression and our code block, those are reflected currently. Now let me, let me save this, go back and open the model. Oh, I forgot to assign them as a parameter. <laughs> so let me, um, now that I have those added, let me assign them as a parameter, then save the model. And we'll open it back up. And you'll see that it is now possible to change the expression and code block as well. And so it'll be up to you to design the model um, the way that's going to fit your use case. But um, that's how you can sort of arrange the model to be more user friendly um, and streamline workflows for your organization. I, I know uh, models are generally very common for like hydrological modeling, um, where you have the, the same set of steps uh, over and over again. You just need to change the input data sets. And um, there are many, many other applications. So I hope you learned something from the, the three videos in this tutorial. And um, good luck going out and uh, streamlining workflows and, and showing how GIS can be valuable for your organization. All right, thanks, and see you next time.